Hello, welcome to Studio Red Tech Tips. My name is Alan Wilson. I'm the lead industrial designer, and I want to show you today how to render in Keyshot from SolidWorks using Photoshop to create normal maps and bump maps. First, I'll show you the quick and easy way that I rendered these dimes in the lower right corner. I got a lot of inquiries about these, about how I did that, and I'll show you the quick and simple way, and then we'll do a more detailed way later on in the process. Let me show you the product first that I rendered. This is the Thin Optics credit card case. When you pop it open like so, glasses pop out. You can wear them like this and simply place them back in like so. So when I rendered this product, it seemed very grandiose, large and imposing. It wasn't until I added these dimes in the lower corner that it gave it scale and showed how small it was actually. Sometimes that's necessary and using coins, familiar coins, is one way to do that quickly and easily. Let me break into Keyshot and show you how I rendered these dimes. Let's look at the scene tree and see that there are two dimes. They consist of two parts, an outer ring and an inner disc. And we'll look at the inner disc first. Now this simply has a texture applied, dragged and dropped from the internet. It's the image of a dime and adjusted the scale and such and the bump depth in order to achieve this. Let's look over at the outer disk and show you how I got this material change. This is a feature in Keyshot Pro to use the material graph to visualize this. I've added a label and a color gradient between these two metals. Let me click on C on my keyboard to show you how this works. Here we have white to black to white being an opacity mask by using a color gradient. Over here you can see I have a crisp transition between the white, black, and white which can be adjusted like so. But I wanted it to be crisp like this. So that's providing an opacity mask between the two different metals. Let's click C on the keyboard to break out of that again. See we're getting our render back. And one of these metals being the nickel silver color and one being copper. All right, let's describe quickly what the difference between a bump map and a normal map are by going to Google. A bump map is a gray image like this with black and white and gray. A normal map has these colors of purple, green, blue, like so, and they both define how the light will bounce off of objects. The most glaring difference is that a bump map will have this crisp edge of the geometry, while a normal map will actually raise the geometry around the perimeter and give peaks and valleys. They both have highlights and shadows, but that's the difference between a bump map and a normal map. So I want to take you into Photoshop and show you how to create either of these. We'll work on the normal map because it's more accurate. All right. I simply did an image search online to find these images of quarters. I was attracted to this because it has some nice contrast with shadows and highlights while having a very flat background. I tried also these photographs and they worked horribly. I was also attracted to the Yosemite back of the coin because we just camped in Wawona. Let's work with the front of the coin using this image that has the high contrast. You'll see I have it in Photoshop at the highest resolution possible. I will shrink myself down so I can access these. We want to always make a copy. And the trick here is to go into filter and then 3D and we can either generate a bump map or a normal map. The bump map just creates that black and white and gray image so let's jump down here to normal map. It'll pop up a 3D preview box. So here we have a sphere here and it's a little confusing so let's turn it to a cube wrap so we can see what sort of geometry is automated. Let's zoom in closely. 
Our goal is to have some texture on the face, but a smooth background. I'm going to actually do some painting later in Photoshop to achieve the smooth background. But let's try to get some good contrast, not so much blurriness, some good detail using these sliders. Now there's also a way to adjust here in the contrast details. You play with those and see what they give you. One thing I don't like about this <coughs> generate normal map program is that it seems like the text is outlines rather than raised. But from far enough away it gives a highlight and a low light and it, it's imperceivable that they're outlines. Now I'll go ahead and cancel out of this because I've created a layer already with the settings that I liked. It looks like so. You'll see that there's a lot of texture on the face but also in the background. So what I've done there is used this layer and the wand tool to select the background and inside a lot of the letters here. <coughs> Pardon me. And I have created a selection like load selection, background, okay, like so. Then I simply made a new layer and filled that in with the normal map. Let me show you that online real quick. This is an example of a normal map. It's got these different colors which designate what way the geometry is shaped so that the light knows which way to bounce after it hits. So I pulled this into Photoshop so I could grab this purple flat area and filled it in like so. Now if we turn that on and we also view this, you can see the difference between this and this and it's going to help us achieve a much, realist, much more realistic look. If we were to go in with this, you can see that this whole background area has kind of dents and concavities, whereas this would appear more flat. Here is the image that we referenced earlier. I just used the eyedropper tool to grab that purple color. So we save that out as a JPEG, and I'll show you how that works. Actually, I'll show you quickly the Yosemite version, same thing. This is what came out of the generator and then I covered over the flat areas with a nice smooth purple color. Let's go in and look at this image. All right, we'll go ahead and close our animation window. Pull this down. All right. Let's edit this material and see what it looks like inside. All right, this I used the material graph so I could achieve scratches on a second layer bump. Um, that's a little advanced, but you can go to textures, add scratches, and then add that in. You have to also add oops, utility, bump add. That's how you get this box and this box, and then you add them into bumps. So we've got one bump on top of another bump, which is actually a normal. Here's your normal. I'll show you how we can simply drag and drop that in from our folder. We've got our heads versions here. I'm just going to drag that from off screen onto here. Drag and drop. We're going to add that to the bump. All right, I have a prediction why that didn't work the first time. I believe it's because in Photoshop, I want to make this the exact size of the quarter at 300 DPI so that the DPI matches in Keyshot and Photoshop. I should say pixels per inch PPI. Now let me show you how I might do this. We grab our calipers and a quarter and we measure the outside diameter as 0.95 inches, approximately. 
Let's turn off these layers so we can see our original image. We know that from these ridges, knurled edges, that we want it to be 0.95. So rather than cropping it precisely to those edges, I'm going to assume that this is one inch, and then we can adjust later in Keyshot. But if we change our image size to one inch here, but make sure we have 300 dpi here, we can match the resolution in Keyshot. I should say PPI. Now we'll see that this is full size actually, and we can save this image out as one to one, and hopefully we can drag and drop that on and it'll lock into place more easily. I'm going to pause while I do that. We've got 300 by 300 pixels. If we drag and drop that onto here, we see that we can apply it to the bump. That removes the scratches that we saw earlier. We see that it's reversed, but it's in the proper place because now it is 24 millimeters, about an inch wide. So in order to repair this, we need to flip it around like so. And then we can also tell it that it's a normal map. Greatly improves the resolution there. Now we also want to change the bump height, perhaps. I'll show you what an extreme look might be. We can get very deep. Let's keep it about 1.5 right now. As that reses up, we'll see that it gets clearer and clearer. And from afar, in a scene with the product, of course, this is going to look real because we're not looking at the extreme details. On this, I would scale it up a little to remove the ridges on the edges. Let's flip over to performance mode. We'll go to our scale. Maybe make this 25.5. A little too much. 25.3. There we go. We get rid of some of the edges there. Alright, you can work with that. We can go over to the properties and we can add roughness or not. If it was perfectly smooth, we get some harsh reflections. It doesn't very, look very realistic. And then earlier I showed you how to add the scratches on it. Let me pause and go ahead and show you how the scratches were added just as a little bonus. All right, there are some scratches in this quarter that I can show you how they were added. If we open up the material graph, we can see that we have scratches as a second bump, the normal map as the first bump, and we had to add that bump map by going to utilities bump add. So now there's two. We use the same trick as we used before. Press C on the keyboard. You can see what the scratches are like. There are things over here that you can slide. We can have the bump height, which we can't see in this preview, but the density, if we were to change this can only go up to five, but we can do levels, bump that up to five, and then you have layers on layers of scratches. We have the size, directional noise, parallel or not parallel, and then this noise makes them squiggly or not squiggly. So if we were to apply this, it would look pretty extreme, but I'll show you what that looks like. that was dragged across the cement. Well, let's go ahead and turn that off. I'll render this up in an animation. I simply have it rotating twice using the animation wizard. Let's see what we get here. All right, can't see much because of the preview quality, but We'll see what that looks like tomorrow when it's done rendering. Thank you for watching Studio Red Tech Tips. This was a tutorial about how to render with normal maps and bump maps, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your time. See you next time.